Asterisk. At first glance, they look like aircraft carriers, but they are not. These steel monsters are amphibious assault ships floating fortresses that can flood their own decks to launch hovercraft, unleash fleets of armored vehicles, and send thousands of marines storming onto enemy shores. Imagine an entire city of war rising from the sea. A moving airbase, a tank depot, a hospital, and a factory of invasion rolled into one. Wherever they sail, peace trembles because these giants exist for one reason only, to bring war across the sea. But how did such terrifying machines come to life? To understand their true power, we must go back to the beginning. Asterisk. Asterisk. The story begins not with steel giants, but with small wooden boats. During World War II, the United States faced the impossible task of landing armies on hostile shores. At Normandy in 1944, the world witnessed one of history's largest amphibious invasions. Thousands of Higgins boats crewed, open craft carrying Marines straight into gunfire became the first generation of amphibious assault. America learned a brutal lesson. Wars are won not just by ships that fight at sea, but by ships that can deliver armies across oceans. From the Pacific island hopping campaigns to the beaches of Europe, the idea of combining sea power with land invasion became unstoppable. Those wooden boats evolved into tank landing ships, then into helicopter carriers and finally, into the massive steel fortresses we see today. What began as survival craft became floating engines of conquest. Asterisk. Keel and hull. Kari Tao Thun Tao Kong Lo. Vertical bar 2, 315. Vertical bar to 190 Tunsu. Asterisk. Every amphibious assault ship begins with a keel, the steel backbone stretching the length of a skyscraper laid on its side. From this spine, the hull grows, section by section, lifted into place by cranes taller than buildings. Each steel block weighs as much as a tank, and thousands must be welded together with fire hot enough to cut through mountains. As the walls rise, a cavernous interior takes shape. The skeleton of the ship looks like an unfinished cathedral ribs of steel arching toward the sky. Workers swarm across beams, sparks raining around them like molten stars. This is where the giant is born, a city of steel taking its first breath. Yet the hull alone is nothing but an empty shell. It must grow wings on its back before it becomes truly terrifying. Asterix. Asterisk. Above the rising hull, a slab of steel the size of several football fields is laid down the flight deck. This floating runway must endure the pounding weight of helicopters, tilt rotors, and even supersonic jets landing vertically. Elevators as large as apartment buildings are welded into place, capable of lifting aircraft from the cavernous hangars below. Then rises the island, the command tower, bristling with radar domes and communication arrays. From here, commanders will control an invasion that can stretch across hundreds of miles. The ship now looks like an aircraft carrier, but it is not. Beneath this deck lies something far more unique, something no carrier can do, a secret dock that can flood itself, birthing machines of invasion straight into the sea. Asterisk. Water levels are rising fast. We're at maximum flow. Asterisk. Deep inside, 
engineers carve out the heart of the ship, the well deck. Unlike any ordinary vessel, this dock can open its gates and flood itself with seawater. Within minutes, the ship becomes a steel harbor, launching hovercraft, landing craft, and armored vehicles directly into battle. Here, hovercraft known as LCACs roar out of the belly of the ship, each capable of carrying a 70-ton Abrams tank at speeds of over 40 knots. Above the dock, entire decks stretch for hundreds of meters, cavernous garages that can house dozens of tanks, amphibious assault vehicles, and artillery. Elevators the size of houses connect each level, shuttling war machines like a giant factory floor. What once was raw steel has now become a forge of mechanized invasion. But to move this city across oceans, something even greater is needed. Engines strong enough to propel a fortress through the waves. Asterisk. Asterisk. At the core of these ships lie engines so vast they could power entire towns. Massive gas turbines and diesel generators churn with thousands of horsepower, driving propellers the size of small houses. The ship is wired like a living organism. We have a strong Miles signal, of sir. pipes pump fuel, water, and air. Networks of cables feed electricity to every deck. At its center is the Combat Information Center, a war room glowing with digital maps and radar sweeps where officers can command an invasion in real time. Every compartment hums with hidden systems, fire suppression, ventilation, medical bays, and armories. The ship is not just steel and engines. It is a city with its own heartbeat. But even a city is meaningless without wings. To truly unleash war, these ships must turn into air bases at sea. Asterisk. Asterisk. Now the flight deck comes alive. Giant helicopters, Chinooks, and sea stallions thunder onto the steel runway. Tiltrotor ospreys, part plane and part helicopter, fold and unfold their wings with mechanical precision. And then, the crown jewel, the F-35B Lightning II, a stealth fighter capable of vertical takeoff and landing, roaring upward like a missile, then dropping down onto the deck with pinpoint precision. Below, hangars hum with motion, mechanics fueling, arming, and preparing dozens of aircraft at once. The assault ship has become what few imagined not just a transport, but a mobile airbase projecting power far beyond the horizon. But aircraft alone do not win wars. The true measure of these giants comes when their human cargo, thousands of Marines, storm ashore. Asterix. Asterisk. Inside these steel walls live more than 2,000 Marines, a small army at sea. They eat, sleep, and train aboard the ship, turning steel corridors into barracks and mess halls into planning rooms. When the order comes, the transformation is immediate. Helicopters roar off the deck, carrying squads into the sky. LCAC hovercraft flood from the well deck, racing toward shore with tanks and armored vehicles. Amphibious assault vehicles crawl down ramps, plunging into the surf. It is a sight both magnificent and terrifying. An entire war unleashed from a single floating city. What began as slabs of steel has become an invasion force capable of overwhelming a coastline in hours. Yet the ship itself remains a silent fortress, replenishing, refueling, ready to send wave after wave. This is not a weapon that strikes once, 
It is a factory of war that never sleeps. Asterisk. Asterisk. An amphibious assault ship is not just a vessel. It is a fortress, a factory, and a city of war combined. Within its decks, steel becomes invasion, and oceans become highways of destruction. These ships carry the lessons of history and the technology of tomorrow. They remind the world that power does not come only from missiles or carriers, but from the ability to bring an entire army anywhere on Earth. They are not built for peace, they are built for dominance. And this is only the beginning. Because if amphibious assault ships are the factories of war, then nuclear aircraft carriers are the cities of war. Vast, unstoppable, and terrifying. That is the story we uncover next. Asterisk. <laughs>